Hey guys, and welcome to this comparison video between Microsoft Flight Simulator X, Dovetail Games Flight Sim World, and Laminar Research's X Plane 11. Looking online, there are numerous other videos which do compare the three simulators, yet use a modded version of each, which does defeat the points of a comparison video. I know, I did this myself. In this video, I'll be comparing all three simulators using their default vanilla settings and giving a verdict to which simulator takes the edge at this moment of time. It is definitely worth mentioning that FSX at this point is nearing 11 years old, while X-Plane 11 is still fairly new release onto the market. Flight Sim World is also still in early access and beta, meaning FSX does just have to show if it's stood the test of time or not, and Flight Sim World has to show us what it can already provide, giving X-Plane the small advantage over the two, being the most recent simulator and also being in full release. I will be comparing these simulators over seven different factors. The range of aircraft that includes the quality of each aircraft, default ground scenery, night environments, the simulator stability, the simulator modability, and the most important of all, the flight dynamics. First of all, the range of aircraft in each simulator. As default, FSX comes with 30 different aircraft and variations, which range from general aviation such as the Piper Cub to commercial aircraft such as the 737 and A321 to even some historical aircraft as well. Flight Sim World comes with 7 different aircraft, all of which are general aviation, but Dovetail Games are expected to release more aircraft as the game goes further into development, but as it stands, this is a fairly small selection of aircraft to choose from. x 11 arrives with a total of 22 aircraft with a wide variety of types, from general aviation such as the one Cessna 172 to commercial airlines such as 73 and 747s and the MD-80. As we are just comparing the variation of aircraft in the simulator and nothing else at this point, it does show that FSX did include more content from the get-go, meaning that this will win the first point within this video. Next we take a look at the quality of each aircraft that comes packaged within the simulators. This section specifically looks into the modelling and sound of each aircraft. FSX aircraft are old, low in quality, and for the most part were replaced by add-ons years ago. Most default sounds were also fairly poor s samples, with the odd aircraft actually sounding realistic. These aircraft definitely did not stand the test of time, which uh, may shows that what maybe was groundbreaking 10 years ago now seems fairly weak. x 11 includes high quality aircraft, some of which are ports from previous versions of the simulator, but do still live up to today's high standards. Not all of them are amazing however, with some features on these aircraft not being functional, many of them giving a low fidelity feel to it. Flight Sim World aircraft however do both look and sound amazing. A2A helps in developing these aircraft within the simulator, and the end result is in some cases payware quality aircraft within the default game. Sounds within Flight Sim World also trump that of x as default and blow anything FSX can provide out of the water meaning we'll award Flight Sim World with the points from this round. Default Scenery next, and I think we all know there is only one winner. FSX uses a system called Ground Class where a grid is created over the worlds, to which the simulator will determine whether or not the scenery above it is urban, rural, coastal, desert, etc. This does leave us with a slightly checkerboard effect, which doesn't always look great at best. Flight Sim World uses the same system that improves on this with new textures provided by Rex and a new True Sky system which introduces realistic clouds and weather effects into the simulator which is a massive improvement over the default FSX. X-Plane uses OpenStreetMap data to generate roads and buildings within the simulator. This can produce realistic ground scenery based on that of the real world, assuming the coverage in this part of the world is high. The building textures themselves within all three simulators are not the greatest by any means, but FSX especially being low resolution, and there is only one winner in this category based on surrealism, and that has to be x 11. Another trumping is next with the night environments from all three simulators. FSX defined its night environment through textures. That means autogen buildings and ground surfaces would start to glow yellow as nighttime approach, which definitely did not look good. It may have looked good 10 years ago, but it just doesn't live up to today's standards at all, and now short, falls short for many. Flight Sim World has improved over its predecessor, the night environments, with the introduction of 3D lighting, yet it still can sometimes appear too dark and with minimal visibility available to you. As before, we can only have one winner in this case, and it's x 11 which for years has dominated the night environment scene. 
With lots of extra style through the use of its road traffic, 3D lighting, you name it, X Plane wins this by a long stretch. Now onto the stability of both simulators. Find me one person that FTX has not crashed for. The game was released at a time when Steve Ballmer, former CEO of Microsoft, thought that the future was through single, powerful single core processor computers. However, this was never the case, meaning hardware has always struggled to run this simulator from day one, without it running out of memory, as a single core of your processor is being worked too hard. The GPU is also not used by FSX, adding more strain to the processor. Both Flight Sim World and X-Plane 11 do delegate between the CPU and the GPU, with the simulator itself running fairly well across most hardware. While requirements can be high for both simulators, crashes are rare and the simulator does run fairly well at a stable frame rate. Both simulators do share the points with FSX now being left behind. Both simulators can be modded with a range of extra add-ons, payware and freeware. x 11 has a, had a long history of modding, which aircraft being developed all the way back to x 7 and beyond. This gives the user a lot of aircraft and scenery to choose from, with many of them still being compatible to this day. Flight Sim World, however, has been locked out of all modding at this minute, and this is down to the fact that the simulator is still in beta and development is still ongoing. It is also possible to modify Sim World with a few tweaks I've discovered, but this is far from official yet. I will, however, give the point to FSX at this time, just for the fact it has more available to it. When you look at some major developers such as PMDG and Aerosoft, they have barely scratched the surface with X-Plane mods. As for years, X as for years, FSX has had a majority of the market share, and most of the mods have been produced for this simulator. This is destined to change, however, over time, but for now, FSX is the winner of the section to me. Finally, we go to the most important aspects for any flight simulator, the flight dynamics. FSX uses predefined values within a dot .cab file within all aircraft, which gives the aircraft its set flying capabilities with minimal leeway around that. Flying can be too easy as such, with most aircraft not feeling the most realistic within the simulator. Flight Sim World uses the same system, with Alki Fuel integrated into it all aircraft. This gives the user a much more realistic capability when flying, as well as camera movements that match out the real aircraft. Gauges will also react to the environment, whether that be through vibrations or heavy impacts to the aircraft through perspex shimmers. X-Plane uses a system called Airfoils, where the airflow around the aircraft is accurately portrayed into the simulator based on the exterior model, and is affected by conditions such as weather, the payload, the fuel weight, centre of gravity and more. The airfoil system goes into a lot of depth, more than I can explain, so for this category, the only winner can be X-Plane 11. Now that we have a complete table, it's fair to say that each simulator does in fact have its strengths. I personally tried to keep my own opinion out of this comparison, and it has left us with some pros and cons for each simulator being looked at. This is where you guys as the viewers come in. Do let me know down in the comments describing which simulator you feel deserves to be the top spot and why. I'm sure you'll get plenty of people with different arguments for and against each simulator. As it stands, they all do serve their purposes and try to stay relevant today while trying to get the edge over one another.